Hello guys and welcome for another New World Eternum video. Today I will go off the script and I will simply explain you how the faction shop works, what you should buy and what you should definitely avoid from the shop because as you might know if you are a new player and you don't know exactly what is happening in the game you might fall for the trap of buying stuff from the faction shop and then regretting in the future. So let's go quickly to the faction here, which is this NPC. Of course, there is other representatives for the three different factions, but it doesn't really matter because the rewards are everywhere the same with just small exceptions, which we will go into details in a bit. So as you can see, any faction has like a total of six different ranks. You will progress through that with doing different quests, either that be PVP or PVE ones. And eventually you will reach the highest. I'm currently Covenant faction so the highest is Paladin. But let's go from the very beginning and see what we should definitely avoid. As you can see there is quite a lot of weapons and armors for the lower tier ranks. And if we hover over them we will see that those items are for around level 20. So if you are around level 20 make sure to not buy from the shop. The first and only reason is that they are super expensive. I know that 30 gold might not seem a lot, but believe me, if you just go and do your journey, do your quests, follow the main storyline or even do some side quests, you would get technically either the same or even better items. Also, it's not really good to spend your money for those kind of things, just because as soon as you buy them in 30 or 40 minutes, maybe even an hour, you would be 5 to 10 levels above and those items would not have that much of an impact. Of course, the same can be said about the, car the cartridge and the arrows here, because if you are playing a musket or a blunderbuss or a bow, technically the items uh, and weapons that are consuming those items, they would not be that valuable for you. And this rune here is not really also an option. I will explain that a little bit further when we get into the runes. Um, so yeah, in general, please avoid buying any gear that is in the lower ranks. Now, another super, super important thing is those cash boxes that you see here that are giving you trading skills, don't fall for this. Like uh, this would not give you that much of experience. It's just better to go and chop some trees outside of the, of the city Yes, you would need different levels. Yes, you would need a certain level to be uh, on your professions, but it's just better to go and take that on the natural way, on the natural path. Don't fall for the, for the mistake to buy those boxes. Yes, they barely cost anything, but just the time that you will spend to get those faction tokens and so on, it would just not be worth it. Okay, so moving on to the Templar. It's technically the same thing here. Um, the gear, as you can see, even though it looks the same, is just a little bit higher on the level. Now we are talking about level 25. Of course, the prices are going up both for uh, gold and for faction tokens. It's still the same thing. Of course, you don't want to buy them. Um, the same thing can be applied for the cash boxes, which will give you gathering uh, skills. The only good item from this um, from this like uh, portion of items is this master material converter. I will go into further details about it again in the in the end uh, when we see what are the good items from the faction shop. Uh, and again, you need to skip this major rune of holding because it's not used in really good recipes. It's just for lower tier and low level ones. Going further, uh, I think this would be the excubitor or whatever. Um, here we have greater rune of holding, which is still not the one that we need, but we have two other items that are pretty decent. Um, the one is the star metal chisel, which is used for crafting orbs for PvE arenas, which is an arena that you can go with your buddies up to five people fighting a certain boss. And those arenas are usually rewarding you with cool stuff uh, and also some artifacts. This is one of the items that you can buy as you need one of them to create one orb. Uh, there is a limit of five orbs per week. So technically, if you buy five of those, you can create five orbs for a specific arena. In total, those arenas are three. So if you want to craft all of them, 15 per week would be enough. And then you have the gem setting pin, which can apply a gem socket on a specific weapon. Mainly, this is used for artifacts in which you get the artifact without the gem socket, but then if you want to add one, you can do that. An example can be given with Pestilence, because this is one of the artifacts that come without um, a gem socket, but you can apply one. Again, avoid buying the gathering boxes. This is not worth it. 
And then we are going to the last two ranks, which are Adjudicator and the Paladin. Now we can talk about the Grand Runes of Holding, because this one is the one that you want to get. This one is used in many recipes, but this time the recipes, of course, are for higher level. And I can give you an example with the um, Golden Chests. Of course, in the Fresh Start servers, this recipe most likely will be missing, because it's a, one of the rare furniture recipes. But in the already existing servers, quite a lot of people have that, so they can craft you a storage chest, which will increase the capacity of your storage in any city by 1050 kilograms. So, in order to craft this, uh, this chest, sorry, you need this Grand Root of Holding. Avoid buying the Banner of Fragment because this will always have a huge chance of dropping when you fight someone outside in the open world PvP. 1000 gold is not even close to what this worth. Usually on the market currently it's going between 3 and 10 gold depending on the day. But yeah, 10 gold compared to 1000 as you can imagine is, is quite a big difference. And again, it goes without saying, avoid buying the gear. The gear is not good. And it's also for level 49 even. Those prices are just e extremely expensive. And we go to the last one. I would not repeat myself too many times by saying that the, that the armors are just not worth it. For those prices you can technically buy better gear from the shop. But the other items that are cool to be bought are the gypsum warps. Which are free technically because they don't cost you any gold. Uh, they require however the faction tokens. But if you do your 3 daily quests... Uh, for, for the day, you would get enough faction tokens to get those. The Rate of Adventure is used for specific, uh, for specific recipes on your Heart Rune, but you will get enough of them by doing the story quests in Brimstone. If you do all your side quests and story quests in Brimstone, you would not have any issues with those. However, if you are still finding difficulties to have enough, maybe you can spend a few but I would, I would not do that. It's, uh, it's quite expensive as well. And then we go to the next one, which is also like a huge, huge price uh, and, and goat consumer. It's the Shard of Pride. This one, same as the Banner of Command, um, sorry, Banner of uh, Banner Fragment. This one also drops from open world PvP. And usually on the market, it's going between 1 and 2,000 gold. As you can see here, it costs 20,000 gold. Please don't spend your money on this. It's used for crafting, but it's not even better crafting than the regular way. So just avoid buying this. You will also see a specific items that are for a trophy, but this can be considered a little bit endgame stuff. Um, I will just briefly explain how it works. So if you buy this component for ultimate combat trophy, this would mean that if you have all the major trophies for different combat bonuses such as angry earth bonus, uh, corrupted bonus, ancient, human, lost and then beast which I assume those are all of them. You can combine all of them in a single trophy so you don't spend all of your five slots in a single house. Now as you can imagine this is 45,000 and this is just for one of those ultimate trophies. In the best case scenario, you would like to have three of them. So you can imagine that the price is kind of high. So that's why it's considered as an endgame. Um, again, it goes without saying that the harvesting thing should be avoided at all cost. And of course, the last rank, which is the Paladin. You skip again those things. Those are extremely high prices. You don't want to buy that. You have few items which are super nice and definitely you should take them. Maybe even on a, on a daily and weekly basis. Those are the Azot Inductor. As you can see, I already bought mine and that's why it's on cooldown. This one will give you the chance to craft a 700 gear score piece with a guaranteed 3 perks. 3 perks means that you can technically make the best in slot or whatever you like item in the game. Now, this one is a bit expensive. As you can see, it's 25k, but it has a cooldown of one week, which means that it's quite valuable and if you have the crafting professions, you are also able to sell those crafts to other people. So if you uh, buy the Azot Inductor for 25,000, maybe you can sell it for 30, for 35, even for maybe 40,000 depending on the demand. And uh, of course, you just need to have the crafting professions. Now, the Chromatic Seal has a one day cooldown. It's not one week as the Azot Inductor. And this one is necessary to also upgrade your gear or the named items in the game or even the artifacts. Um, so it's kind of valuable item and definitely in the very beginning it would be super nice if you can stack 
every single day one of those because like I said it has a daily cooldown. Then you have another type of runes which are exquisite rune of holding. Those are super expensive, they are 10,000 gold. They are used for crafting bags, same as the other runes, that's why I said that I will leave it until the end. So all the runes are used for crafting bags and the difference is the gear score. However, if you craft bags with 700 gear score, which will require you this exquisite rune of holding, the difference between those and the previous one, which is with grand rune of holding, uh, let me just scroll a little bit up, with this one, the difference is not that big. If you compare it with the lower tier ones from the first, the second, the third rank and so on, then it's gonna be noticeable. But with those two, there is not that much of a difference. So if you don't want to min max straight from the beginning, I would just I would just skip this one. I would just leave it for, for the very end game. And then we have few other items uh, in the Paladin section. Of course, if you are in the purple or the green faction, the name of those ranks will be different. But those items here that you see, they are mount attachments. I really don't know who would pay that much of gold because you literally have to print gold to buy them. But all of those mount attachments, they are not worth it the price. 20,000 up to 30,000 gold for those, I would even say ugly attachments, it's not worth it. However, if you feel like you have the money and you want to spend it on, just go for it. Be, be free and do whatever you like. And the last item that I want to speak about is this one here. Now, any faction can have a different item. Um, in the Covenant faction, this specific chest piece will give you 10% chance to craft extra cooking. So this would usually be only 2% if you have the normal chest piece for the cooking um, outfit. But this one gives an additional 8% for cooking. I don't really think that those 8% will justify the price of 65,000 gold and 85,000 tokens. But if you are a collector and you believe that you would cook so much so you can feed the whole Chinese nation, then you can definitely go for this chess piece and you can use it. Maybe you will eventually get your money back with this 8% bonus, um, you know, additional food. But I would also skip this. So to conclude what you need to buy and what not, Try to reach your highest rank of faction as soon as possible. If you are Covenant, it would be called Paladin. If you are Marauder or Syndicate, it would be different. Unfortunately, I forgot the names. When you reach those, make sure that you buy every day your Gypsum Orbs. They are two Gypsum Orbs on the Adjudicator faction rank and there is another three on the Paladin. Then if you have the money and your cooldowns are ready, Make sure to buy your Azot Inductor and Chromatic Seal. If you feel like you don't have that much money, I would say that you should skip the Chromatic Seal, but make sure to save a little bit on the side for your Azot Inductor. How to make the best money, you can check in my other guides. But one other thing that I want to, to mention with you, whenever you reach your NPC for the faction, you can see on the very top, it says daily bonuses available. For me, it currently says zero out of three because I already did mine. But usually when you start the day, you would see here three out of three. Now, what does this uh, do to you? It will give you a 10 times multiplier on the rewards for each of the faction quests that you get. So, for example, if I look at those quests because they are in a low territory um, in Winsworth, it would give me 16.5 gold and 580 tokens. If this is the first quest for the day, it would become 165 gold and 5,000 tokens. However, if you go in a higher level territories, such as Brimstone, Reekwater, Shattered Mountains, or anything else that is like level 60 and above, all those quests will give you around 25 to 26 gold, which means that 10 times the amount would be 250, 260. Completing three of those will net you 750 gold and quite a lot of faction tokens as well. So this one is really must do thing when you log into your new world Eternum adventure. That's it from me guys. Today it was a bit uh, free video let's say without the script like I said. But I just hope that it was useful information. Again try to avoid buying stuff especially gear wise in the faction shop. There is enough gear for you on your way to level 65. So don't spend your money, don't spend your resources on buying some random stuff from the faction. 
you will get there, you will see what I mean and you will be happy for it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check some other cool tips and tricks, make sure to check the videos that you see on your screen. Uh, if you want to catch me live streaming or just join the Discord community, feel free to do so. I will leave a link for both in the description below. And without much to say, I wish you a nice day and I will see you on the next one.